Are you thinking of moving to Somerville, South Carolina, and you want to know what the pros and cons are? We're going to talk about the pros and the cons, the good and the bad, and everything you need to know about living in Somerville, South Carolina. And stick around until the end because we're doing something special. It's going to be different and it's going to be fun. So the first pro of living in Somerville, South Carolina is the great quality of life. There are lots of things to do in the downtown area. There are shops and restaurants, and this place has been rapidly expanding over the last few decades. The neighborhoods have lots of activities, especially in the master plan communities like Cane Bay Plantation and Nexton. There are amenity centers with dog parks, pools, and walking trails that double as golf cart trails. There are also the Charleston County parks nearby that you can explore. The second pro of living in Somerville is the convenience of having shopping and restaurants right at the tip of your fingers. To the north of 17, there's the Azalea Square Shopping Center. You'll find Target, a movie theater, TJ Maxx, Ross, Kohl's, and restaurants. And right across 17, there's also the North Main Market. At the North Main Market, you have Walmart, Belk, Lowe's, Home Depot, automotive shops, there's tons of great food options in this area and you have ice cream shops as well. Plus there's a lot of space for parking. Now if you follow 17 down, it will lead you to downtown Somerville. There's free parking in downtown Somerville. Typically, you know, you go to downtown Charleston and you have to pay to park at a meter or at a parking garage. So the fact that Somerville has this is really nice. The third pro is jobs. Somerville is absolutely booming along with the rest of Charleston. There are new hospitals popping up, healthcare is booming, the IT and tech industries, as well as the manufacturing industries. You have the new Volvo plant in Ridgeville. There's also Boeing and Bosch nearby in Ladson and North Charleston. There are lots of new schools springing up, so there is high demand for teachers as well. And of course, Charleston is a port city, so lots of jobs come with that too. And if you've seen my original pros and cons of living in Charleston video, the fourth pro is the weather. It's warm most of the year and it rarely ever snows. We have a light dusting of snow every four or five years. But most of the time it's nice and sunny. You do get a little hot during the summer. So if you're from the North, prepare for that. If you wanna know about the pros and cons of living in Charleston in general, you're gonna to wanna to check out this video here. Now, pro number five is the outdoor recreation. There are lots of parks in Somerville to explore and lots of Charleston County Parks as well. There's the Wanamaker County Park in North Charleston. There are also water parks too. So if you wanna spend more time outdoors with your kids and your family, then I recommend that you get the Charleston County Park Pass. You can explore other parks like the Palmetto Island Park in Mount Pleasant and the James Island County Park where they have the Festival of Lights. It's only 70 bucks for an annual pass and that gets you parking at the Isle of Palms Beach too. Usually when you go to one of these parks, it's $2 per person. So if you do go to the park often, you end up saving a lot of money on that. Now in terms of things to do downtown Somerville, there's also the Flower Town Festival every year and there's the Farmer's Market every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Somerville is also a short drive to Monk's Corner, Cross, and you'll find lakes there so you can do some fishing if you want. And before we get into the next pro, if you're liking the video so far, please give me a thumbs up. It's like giving me a virtual high five and it really helps out the channel. Now, another pro is the large master plan communities in Somerville, South Carolina. There's lots of new construction happening because so many people are just moving here. You can get a new build or a newer home that's pre-owned. These neighborhoods include Cane Bay Plantation and Nexton. There's also the Del Webb 55 plus community in Nexton. One of the cons though, while we're talking about these master plan neighborhoods is that the lot sizes are typically smaller. They're around 0.16 acres. So if you feel like that is not enough space for you then you might want to look elsewhere oh another con about these large master plan neighborhoods is that they are so large that it does take a little bit of time to get out of the neighborhood you have these long winding roads and it's a beautiful drive but it does take some time to get out of the neighborhood itself now another pro of living in somerville is the location downtown charleston is about 30 to 45 minutes away and you have access to the beaches nearby it's about 45 minutes to an hour long drive to folly beach the Isle of Palms and Sullivan's Island. If you're gonna make the drive to the beach though, make sure to leave early, especially during the summer because the traffic to these places does get backed up. Now, another con that we need to talk about is that some people think Somerville's overgrown. There's a lot of traffic, especially on 17 Main Street and the town of Somerville is working on it. They're building more roads and improving infrastructure to try to keep up with all of the growth. So you will see some construction happening. And that also means that homes are in demand. We've been in a seller's market for the past three years or so, and it's cooled down right now, but it's still growing rapidly. So you'll need to get your kids into schools early, make sure you register early. Then once you make sure that they're in the school that they want, start getting them into their extracurriculars like you know, sports, 
band, arts, theater, whatever they're doing, don't wait until the last minute. Another con is that if you're in downtown Somerville, maybe you have to commute there often. There's a train that goes right through downtown Somerville. So factor that in and leave a cushion of commute time if you're going downtown. Now another con is the F word. No, I don't mean that F word. I mean that there's flooding and it's flat. So there are actually two F words. These two facts also apply to the rest of the low country. It's flat, there are no hills and no mountains to hike. That also means that there's occasional flooding in the low country after heavy rains. Now flooding in Somerville doesn't happen as often as places closer to the peninsula like James Island and Folly Beach. But before you buy a home, make sure to check the flood zone of that home. If it's in flood zone X, that means it has a moderate risk of flooding and homes in that flood zone do not need flood insurance to get a mortgage on that house. Then there's the flood zones AE and VE that have a higher risk of flooding. Most lenders will require flood insurance for homes in those flood zones. If you have questions about flood zones, just text me. If you want to avoid those F words, then hit subscribe below. I'm Kristen Garcia, a realtor with the top brokerage in the Charleston Tri-County area, and I can help you move to Charleston in the next three months or three weeks. Whatever your timeline is, it doesn't matter. Give me a call, text, or email, and I'll be sure to get back to you about that. Now, here's another con that goes for all of Charleston, and that is the critters that you see here. There are mosquitoes, of course, palmetto bugs, and there are no seams, which are the little gnats that creep up on you like a little tiny flying ninja. So keep your bug spray handy. Also the occasional alligators, raccoons, and the rare possum. Another con is related to all the new construction that is happening in Somerville. One of the cons is that new home builders do not have your interest in mind. And you'll need to remember that. I'll give you a little cautionary tale here. This thing happened to one of my clients the other day before she reached out to me. She wanted to buy a new construction home. The builder quoted her a price of $280,000 for her new home, which seems like a great price, right? Well, a few months later, when that lot was released, the price inexplicably went up to $320,000. And when my client, before she became a client, told them that she couldn't afford the new price, they magically were able to lower the price back down for her, right back down to $280,000. So that illustrates that new builders do not have your interest in mind. So please don't get taken advantage of. Make sure you have your own representation where someone can negotiate for you. Plus, builders offer hidden incentives that you wouldn't even know about unless you were working with an agent. Incentives like a lender credit or a flex credit that you can use in any way that you want. But again, you won't know about that unless you reach out to an agent. Hmm, I wonder where you can find a great agent. Remember, it's at no extra cost to you. Our commission is paid by the seller's side. So what have you got to lose? So like, subscribe, and comment below what your favorite part of the video was. And the winner will not only be featured in my next video, but I will also personally mail you a cookie. You will literally get a cookie in the mail. So comment what your favorite pro was and click here to watch another video.